Are you a explorer or a habitual doer? Hello fellow sign lovers, we have now gone through the diagram in many ways but there is still a lot to explore. In this video we're gonna concentrate on the two modes of thought. Now the last video was a bit philosophical but this video is gonna be more uh, about your experience and I think more easily understandable. Just one more thing before we start. I created a Medium account where I write mainly complimentary texts to my videos and the first text is entitled Why Postmodernism is Just Modernism on Steroids. So if you're interested in reading some of my thoughts, please check out that Medium account. There's a link in the description. Be sure to check that out. But now to the diagram. Now we have talked a lot about this diagram already. We have gone through all the three arrows of experience, we have talked about the perception action cycle, we have talked about the habits, the boundaries of systems, the various relationships between these arrows and so on, but there is something that we haven't talked about and that is the two modes of thought or two modes of experience. Now we see that there are two directions that these arrows go. The arrow of perception goes upwards whereas the arrow of habit and the arrow of action go downward. So there are two distinct directions and these two directions are the two modes of experience. Now to get some initial understanding of what this means, we can say that the upward going arrow, that is the arrow of perception, means new information or novelty. It's new experiences, new uh, ideas that flow into the system. The downward going arrows, on the other hand, mean uh, the execution or implementation of already embodied or internalized knowledge. So this is old knowledge that we are then implementing through our actions into the environment. So at this point we should probably name these two modes of experience. I will be using the names explore mode and habit mode. So the upward going arrow is the explore mode and the downward going arrows are the habit mode. Next let's enrich these concepts by describing more precisely what they mean in terms of our experience. So in explore mode, you are curious, inquisitive, open-minded, sensitive, observant, watchful, attentive, and perceptive. In exploration mode, you are concentrating on your immediate experience. You're really living here and now. You are trying to observe new things, new phenomena, and trying to have new experiences. In explore mode, you're not imposing your expectations to your environment. You're not uh, imposing and implementing a pre-learned plan, and you are not trying to mold the environment uh, according to your will. Rather, you are listening to your experience. You are observing your experience, and you're letting the environment tell you what's going on. You're not proceeding according to your pre-existent plans, but you're letting the environment guide you. Logically speaking, you are synthesizing new information through perception. To put it simply, you are learning from experience. Now, in habit mode, you are implementing a pre-existing plan. You are, so to say, running an already programmed program. You are implementing a blueprint. You are executing a pre-learned pattern. In habit mode, your attention is not dominantly concentrated on the immediate experience, the experience uh, of here and now, as you are not trying to learn new things. 
Uh, on the contrary, you are trying to implement something already learned, a pre-existing plan. You're not interested in new information that is flowing into your system. You're not interested in novelty, but you are interested in implementing an already learned plan or pattern of behavior. Now, immediately, it's very important to understand that these two modes of experience are not an either or distinctions. We are not operating simply in explore mode or in habit mode, but again, it's a continuum. One of those uh, aspects can be more dominant. And if you look at this diagram, you can see again, remember, this is flowing all the time, so we cannot separate these two sides from another. We cannot, for example, separate perception from action, as we have learned. So these two aspects or two modes of experience are happening both at the same time, but one of them may be more dominant. Now, you may have the feeling that the habit mode is bad and explore mode is good, that explore mode is this attentive, uh, explorative mode where we should be at all times and this habit mode habit mode is this robotic autopiloting mode when we are stupid and unobservant well this is not that simple we need both of these modes of experience in order to see this we have to just think about a hypothetical situation where we would have no habits at all now what would you be able to do not much, right? Without habits, there is nothing that happens automatically. There is nothing that happens without thinking or constant taxing observations. Now, you couldn't walk and think at the same time. You couldn't pick up a glass without really thinking about it. You would be like a newborn baby all of the time. Actually, you would be less than a newborn baby because a newborn baby has an immense amount of habits already pre-learned through evolution. So actually, you would be completely hopeless. You couldn't do anything because nothing would come uh, automatically. And maybe more importantly, you couldn't learn anything because you couldn't internalize information uh, through habits because you see, when you perceive something, when you have uh, new information flowing into this system, you have to internalize that new knowledge as patterns of behavior, as habits. And if you don't have any habits, well, tough luck, you cannot learn anything. Now, on the other hand, if there were no explore mode, that would mean that there is no new information flowing into the system. That means that whatever the system has already learned, that's all that it's going to learn. There's nothing that can flow into the system. There is no experience to have. There is no perceptions. There is just an implementation of an already learned plan without any possibility of modifying that plan or adapting to the environment because there is no possibility of experiencing something new. So basically, we have a computer. A computer just runs a program. A program that is written by a programmer, and then the computer runs the program. So basically, without explore mode, we would be blind robots. So you see how we need both of these modes. We need to have the explore mode so that in perception, new information can flow into our system. We can have new experiences, novelty that we can learn about our environment. Uh, also, we need the habit mode so that we can internalize that new information in our habits, that we don't have that we can store information in ourselves in a way that when we learn something, we don't have to consciously think about it all of the time. You can ride a bicycle without concentrating uh, completely on riding that bicycle. Now, the interesting thing to explore in these two modes of experience 
is how they interact with one another. And this leads us to a very well known idea uh, from Peirce called the doubt belief cycle. So this idea was firstly presented in an article called The Fixation of Belief. Uh, if you're interested in that article, it can be found in the internet. I link it in the description. If you're more into video forms, Logic and Philosophy has made a great video about that article. There's also a link to that video in the description. So check that out. But the basic idea is very simple. As we learned in the previous video, systems are trying to embody habits that are in harmony with the habits of the environment. Now, when this is the case, the acting of the system or the behavior of the system is very frictionless. Everything flows nicely in this diagram. There are no surprises. There are no conflict with the environment. In that case, the system doesn't have to use a lot of energy. It habits flow nicely with the environment. Everything ha happens automatically. It's a kind of an autopilot mode where we don't have to think about our habits. They just work. And Peirce calls this a state of belief. Now, why call this a state of belief? According to Peirce, belief is a conscious habit. So, for example, when you're walking down the street, which happens very automatically, you don't have to think about it. There is a belief that the ground will remain stationary. And that is something we truly believe. We cannot doubt it. Because if we doubt that belief, we wouldn't be able to walk automatically. Now, when something does not go according to the plan, we enter the state of doubt. We confront some novelty, some surprising, shocking fact that shatters our beliefs and plans. The habits of the environment that actualize as actions that we perceive go against our plans, go against our beliefs, breaking them. This is the brutal secondness of reality that hits you in your face. In the state of doubt, we are shocked and surprised. It is psychologically very taxing, very harsh state to be. We don't like it at all because we don't have any idea what's going on. We, have, we don't have any idea what just happened. And we are confronting the uncertainty of life. We are confronting the chaos. And it is something that is really scary. We don't want to be in that kind of state. We want that the state of doubt ends as soon as possible. Now, to continue the example where you were walking down the street with the belief that the ground will remain stationary, now you fall down. This shocks you. It's a surprising fact that you confront with brutal force. When you fall down at first, you have no idea what just happened. You have no idea what's going on, why you fell down. You enter in the state of doubt. You enter into the world of uncertainty and chaos. Now, to end this state of doubt, you begin to inquire, you begin to explore. We enter the explore mode, or what Peirce calls the state of inquiry. Now, in this state of inquiry or explore mode, we are concentrating on our immediate experience. We are trying to find an explanation that would explain this surprising fact that we just confronted. In other words, we are seeking a new belief, a new habit that would be in a better harmony with the environment. To go back to the example where you are walking down the street, you suddenly perceived how you fell down. That is something shocking. Now you started to inquire. So you are now perceiving your surroundings. And quite fast, you see that there was a banana peel on the street. Now, that kind of perception immediately is an explanation. You understand, oh, it was a banana peel that caused this surprising fact of 
falling down. Now that's an explanation. This explains the fact. So now you are no longer in a state of uncertainty or state of chaos where you have no idea what's going on, but now you do know what went on. You do know why you fell down. Now after you have found an explanation, you can return to this blissful state of belief. You can now get up and start walking again down the street because you know that the ground will remain stationary also in the future. And this anomaly of falling down was caused by a single banana peel. So to summarize, you start in the state of belief. Then some surprising fact causes a shock which throws you into the state of doubt. This state of doubt is psychologically very taxing and because of this you want to return into the state of belief. That happens through a state of inquiry where you try to find an explanation that would explain this surprising fact and resolve the uncertainty. So these are the two modes of experience and I hope that you can recognize yourself these modes in your experience. Try to identify when you go from explore mode to habit mode or from habit mode to explore mode in your everyday life. This is something that you can really recognize if you just pay attention. When you are acting in a very automatic way, when you have a certain learned habit or pattern of behavior that you're just executing on the world, and when you are really exploring the world, when you are trying to figure out something, when you're trying to figure out what's going on, what is this thing, how this works, and you know, you have now names for these kinds of attitudes or modes. When you're exploring, you are in the explore mode. When you are running a program, you are in a habit mode. But again, I want to emphasize that this is not an either or distinctions where you are either in the explore mode or in the habit mode, because both of them are going on all of the time at the same time, but one of them may be more dominant. And sometimes it is not clear which one of these modes is the more dominant one. Uh, let's use the same example I've already used a couple of times, but it is the example when you are, uh, where you are looking for your keys in your apartment. Now you may say that of course this is the explore mode. You are exploring your environment, you are concentrating on your immediate experience here and now, but yeah, th that's the case. You are really exploring, you are trying to uh, get new information from your environment, but at the same time there are a lot of habits going on on the background. For example, you are not concentrating uh, on your movements. You're not concentrating on your walking. So that is running habitually on the background. And this leads into a very interesting idea of these various states of shocks that we may encounter in our experience. These shocks or these surprising facts may be very small or they may be very severe. Now, for example, when you're searching for your keys, that's, I would consider a minor problem because you are, you are still running so many habits there on the background. You're walking, you are, you are able to do many things. At the same time, you are searching for your keys. So that, that shock is not so severe. But consider the shock of being in an earthquake. That's a severe shock. There's a whole bundle of habits uh, or beliefs that are shattered in instant. One of those is walking. You cannot simply walk in an earthquake. It's not that easy. So there are different degrees of shocks that we can encounter in our experience. The more habits this shock will break, the bigger and more severe the shock will be. But that's all for today's video, fellow sand lovers. I hope you join me next week when we look at self-control. Very important and very interesting topic indeed. But I hope that after this video you are able to recognize these two modes of experience, the habit mode and the explore mode, and how they interact in this doubt-belief cycle. Uh, and really try to recognize these things in your experience because they make you more reflective on what you are doing. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. 
subscribe to this channel and share this video with your friends. And one more thing, this diagram needs a name. So if you have any suggestions, please leave them below. And we are trying to find a name for this diagram because diagram number one is a bit lame, to be honest. But join me next week. Good sign hunting and reflective acting.